I attended church camp as a child every summer on Lake Travis near Austin, Texas. We would drive the four hours to Austin in the church van. And one year, my preacher, Mr. Parsons, yep, that was his name, he was driving us to camp. Once we got out of the city of Houston and into the country, Mr. Parsons started doing the oddest thing. He had his hands reached way out as long as they would go, and he was wiggling his fingers. Someone asked him, what are you doing? (laughs) You look so funny. And Mr. Parsons did not flinch. Instead, he answered with the voice of Yoda, I'm feeling the trees. He did this often, by the way. When it comes to building goals, I want you to remember this because that is exactly how I want you to picture your goals. I want you to feel them. You're listening or watching the Stop the Minds Group podcast. I'm your host, Kathy Owen, certified fitness trainer and life coach since 2002, teaching Stop the Mind Screw process. On this channel, we talk about mindset, habits, wellness, fitness, and some reality transurfing as well. I titled today's episode, 10 Steps to Building Long-Term fitness goals. And yes, feeling the trees has a lot to do with this. When it comes to your goals, you want to feel them, like feel them in your imagination, like Mr. Parsons was feeling the trees. The feeling is the secret. That's the title of a book by Neville Goddard, and it's so true. And as a personal trainer, I see so many fall short when it comes to their fitness goals. But it's not your fault. Create a habit instead of a goal. Habits are delicate and our brains do not know the difference between a good habit and a bad habit. And when thinking of goals and creating a new habit, we want to use the SMART goal tool, which I have pictured here. And we will use the acronym often when it comes to discussing goals via habits. So the S stands for specific, the M stands for measurable, the A stands for achievable, R stands for relevant, and T stands for time bound. Here are the 10 steps to building long-term fitness goals. These are the exact 10 steps that are on the hot habit checklist. I refer to these often. You've probably heard me talk about them all before, but we touch on them in different angles when we're talking about habits, when we're talking about goals, when we're talking about fitness. And you can download your checklist at kathyowen.com backslash habit. Link will be in the show notes and the description. Number one is awareness. If you go around with blinders on, you will never experience what is truly meant to be a happy place for you. In other words, you will never be able to fill your goals. I'm almost asked weekly, Kathy, I want to lose weight. What do I need to do? Or, hey, Kathy, my doctor says I need to exercise. What do I need to do? Well, the problem here is this is the wrong question. And I could tell you all day long what needs to be done, but the solution needs to become aware and ask a better question. Really think about this during this episode, because this is kind of the key ingredient here. And you want to think about who do I need to become to lose the weight or to get more exercise in your day? That leads me to step number two, changes in your identity. In his book, Atomic Habits, James Clear tells us that there are three layers of change. One of the most powerful changes you can make in your life is a change in identity. But what exactly does this mean? Change is hard, and you've probably realized that. You are watching this episode because you want to learn how to set clear, long-term fitness goals. Changing your identity is the best way to start setting your outcome goals. 
The key to creating goals that last is focusing on creating a new identity first. Your current behaviors are simply a reflection of your current identity. What you do now is a mirror image of the type of person you believe that you are, either consciously or unconsciously. And to change your behavior for good, you need to start believing new things about yourself. You need to build identity-based habits. Think about how we typically set goals. We might start by saying, I want to lose weight by next month, or I want to get physical activity. But you need to get specific. You know, the S in SMART goals. Think of the person you want to become and identify feelings to that specific. What does that person who lost that weight identify with when it comes to food? The person who is told they need to exercise. What does that person who exercise daily do? Hang with me because this leads to the next step, which is recipe for sustained success. James Clear also tells us in the book Atomic Habits that changing your beliefs isn't nearly as hard as you might think. There are two steps. Decide the type of person you want to become and then prove it to yourself with small wins. So think of baking a cake. And when baking a cake or cookies or even setting goals, we need a recipe. This recipe has to do with changes in your beliefs. And when setting long-term fitness goals, we need to become aware of our beliefs around attainable goals, leaving our comfort zone and even our body weight. I mean, is it really your weight that needs to change? You'd be surprised how many times this is not actually what needs to change. This recipe here, deciding the type of person you want to be and prove it to yourself with small wins and setting is the recipe for success and setting your goals. This actually the secret recipe for success in general. And this is the next step in our goal setting process. And I want you to picture future events in your mind. Think about how would the person you want to become handle themselves? Picture your future self in detail. What do you look like? What do you feel like? What is your body language like? How do you talk? And here's a pro tip. What choices and decisions do you make? And proving it to yourself with small wins, that's a great way to identify immediate goals and celebrate them. To celebrate those small wins, I recommend having a small wins journal. Here you can keep your short-term goals and document and celebrate those small wins on a regular basis. I have a dream big page in my Notion journal. On this page, I insert images of what I want, who I want to become, and even include my short-term and long-term goals. And this way I can look at my smaller goals and find the wins today instead of waiting until I reach the long-term goals. Because my friend, the journey and the destination are actually one, I know. I constantly have to update this journal though. You, you wanna know why? It's because what I have wanted has actually come to be. And I have to dream bigger. <laughs> That's why I call it the dream big journal. So to have changes in, in our identity, we need to have changes in our processes. What does that mean, Kathy? The level of change is concerned with changing your habits and systems. Implementing a new workout routine, for example, or maintaining your meal plan so you achieve your weight loss goals, or tracking your food journal on MyFitnessPal on a consistent basis. And most of the habits you build are associated with this level. By the way, they all represent a smart fitness goal example. While dreaming big in my dream big journal, I also found I need to change my processes to become the person I wanted to be. 
I needed new routines, new workflows, and new practices. And the thing is, you only need to be 1% better today than yesterday. Yeah, that's a slight edge principle by the, from the book, Jeff, a sl The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson, and it really works. The great thing about this step is it helps us identify the M in SMART goals. That M stands for measurable or a measurable goal. You can measure the efficiency of your processes as you begin to identify what is working for you and what is not working for you. You also identify when it comes time to change these processes up as well. That leads me to the next step in our processes and that's outcomes. When baking that cake, if you are aware of the outcome, you know you are baking a cake, not cookies or a uh, ham. <laughs> you are baking a cake. So you, when you're talking about outcomes, this level is concerned with changing your results, losing weight, getting stronger, or just upping your fitness level. Most of the goals you set are associated with this level of change. A lot of us stay stuck in this place for a long time. Why? Because we know what we want, but we have a hard time finding out how to get there. So you know you want a cake, but you got to have the recipe on how to get there. That's your outcomes. But we become really good at knowing the outcome we want. I mean, you found this video or podcast episode, right? And I'm proud of you. You've come this far. Do you want to set long-term goals that really help you? you? You feel those goals in a great way. You know, like Mr. Parsons felt the trees. The key difference is applying all 10 steps so you can find success. We have four more steps to go. Step number six is create friction. It has been said it is easier to avoid temptation than to resist it. For these long-term fitness goals, we need to be ready when temptation comes to play. And trust me, it will. For me personally, it has always been my sleep. I'm really good at sleeping. I could teach you how to do it in my sleep, literally. But I exercise in the morning at 5 30 in the morning. And I'd much rather be looking at the back of my eyelids than get up at 5 30 and hit the gym, but I do it. So how can you incorporate friction to help you do the good habit and stay away from the bad habit? Remember, your brain doesn't know the difference between a good and a bad habit. So friction for me looks like this. I put my alarm in a place where I have to get out of bed to reach it. I repeat certain affirmations to myself, like the hardest part is getting out of bed, or it's going to be a great day. My clothes are already ready. Let's go. And going back to sleep is for excuses. You know, ask yourself, how can I incorporate friction so I can actually do what I have set out to do on my fitness journey and have success in the long run that takes me to the next level? Step number seven is set clear goals. Oh, that's funny. We're talking about that today. <laughs> and you may be saying to yourself, okay, Kathy, that's why I'm here. Isn't this all about setting clear goals? And yes, it is. But do you know why setting clear goals is important? You know, the kind of goals that you can feel like Mr. Parsons feels those trees. When we set fitness goals that are clear, it helps trigger new behaviors, which helps guide your focus and helps you sustain that momentum that you're on in life. Setting clear goals also helps you align your focus and promote a sense of self-mastery. Remember those small wins we talked about? Yeah. You actually have an action plan that will take you a long way. The key points to remember here are triggering new behaviors and guiding your focus and setting these clear goals also help you sustain that momentum and it aligns your focus and promotes a sense of self-mastery. 
In the end, you can't manage what you don't measure and you can't improve upon something that you don't properly manage. The key is feeling those goals. You know, like Mr. Parsons feels the trees. Step number eight is find harmony between challenge and skill. Harmony is the key word here. So Mr. Parsons one time misplaced his keys to the van at a pit stop and he started mumbling dirty word, dirty word, dirty word. And he was mumbling because guess where the keys were? They were in his mouth in between his teeth. And everyone laughed, including Mr. Parsons. And I might add, he did this more than one time. So we all have challenges and we put so much pressure on ourselves to find those dang keys. But sometimes it is best to just laugh and even remember that our goal could even be in between our teeth. You are going to meet challenges along the way. How will you find harmony? I like to focus on even just the word. But here's another thing. And that leads me to step number nine, which is expect failure. I always say this. It's not if you're going to fail, but when. Failure is a part of life. Expect it. Plan for it. You will make mistakes and you are human. Failures are part of the journey to success and everyone faces setbacks. It's how you look at them that makes all the difference in the world. So plan for failure. When you plan for failure, you know that's just part of the journey on the way to the destination. And you are just one step closer to where you want to be. And guess what? The destination is always changing. How will you face that fact when you get there? Failing in life helps to build resilience, and the more we fail, the more resilient we become. In order to achieve great success, we must know resilience. So I'm oftentimes asked to train clients for, for various reasons, and when I'm asked to train someone because they need a trainer, it is one of the most difficult to train because they are being forced to exercise. Well, you remember the levels of power versus force and the levels of consciousness that we talked about? Yeah. Usually when this happens in these instances, they work real hard at first and then they get injured and quit. I've seen this happen so many times. Or they lose that momentum that we talked about. Actually, both of those happen when they get injured or they just lose the momentum because they just took it too hard to start with. And this blows everything up. But if they expect failure and then they have a plan for when that happens, it changes everything. For example, say that you... Are, are, are forced to hire me as your trainer. I would say, okay, you're doing great. You're going good all in your first week. What are you going to do when number one, you get hurt? What is your plan for when you get hurt? So you get back on the wagon. If you hurt your arm, um, how are you going to work your legs? You can't just quit just because your arm is hurt. And what are, what are you going to do to keep you on track. Maybe you need a different type of exercise. Maybe you need to get on the bicycle for a while. I don't know. You've got to expect it and plan for that. And number 10, embody the goal. When you actually embody the new identity of the fitness goal you are to achieve, you get in the zone, also known as flow. Flow is the book by Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, and it's all about the optimal performance, optimal happiness, getting in the zone. You know, much like a professional athlete who embodies the sport he or she is playing. You actually become what is called autotelic. What does that mean? An autotelic personality means your goals are intrinsic. They come from inside. I did a video on motivation. And I'll link it in the show notes and the description. And your work becomes immersive. You get lost in your work, just like that professional athlete does. 
your attention is unwavering. It means your focus is there and your work is inherently enjoyable. So when was the last time you felt like your goals were coming from the inside and you felt immersed in your work and you just couldn't, you, you couldn't focus on anything else, but that, that project that you were working on and your work is inherently enjoyable. Imagine if you could apply that to your fitness goals, what would that change? What would that happen when your goals are coming from the inside and, and you're, you're, you're just lost in whatever exercise you're doing and you, your focus is there and your productivity just skyrockets and it makes it fun. Let me add that you fall in love with the journey and the destination because they are one. Yep. That's right. Spoiler alert. <laughs> the journey and the destination are the same thing. When you embody this journey, you actually feel the goals, you know, like Mr. Parsons feels the trees. So let me ask you a question. How are you going to feel your goals? Well, I can't wait to see what you do. All right. That ends my episode today. I hope you liked it. Thank you for spending part of your day with me. And if you enjoyed this episode, please go out and share it with somebody and be a blessing to someone. That in itself is an awesome reward. Until next time, I'll see you next time. Peace out and namaste.